Thank you. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Richard Carrion, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur from Puerto Rico. To give you a little background about myself, uh, as Michelle said, I, uh, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I went to Fairfield University in Connecticut. I worked for Banco Popular for four years before going to Kellogg, getting my MBA, Came back to Puerto Rico to work at the bank. I have to mention the bank because the bank uh, is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, it was my family business. It started in 1893. Uh, to give you a little history about it, uh, I come from a long lineage of bankers uh, on the island that uh, they did what they could uh, during difficult times. I think the best example that I can give is my great-grandfather during the uh, Depression uh, convinced the mayor of the capital city of San Juan to leave his money at the bank because the bank was safe, it was not going to collapse, it was going to be okay. The mayor went ahead and and he did a whole speech in the town plaza, and he said, he's right, this bank is not going to collapse. And as a symbol of strength, my great-grandfather then built the tallest skyscraper during the Depression as the headquarters for the bank. And that was a great symbol of strength and solidarity for the island. As I stand here today, I'm not an employee of that bank, but an, entrep an entrepreneur who sees the same opportunities as my great-grandfather did during difficult situations and difficult times. Yes, as everybody's mentioned, the times are tough. Yes, we've been in a recession for over 10 years. And yes, I know that the, the economic outlook is very bleak. But this is our moment to show you our strength and the hope and the opportunities of Puerto Rico. So after 12 years of working at the bank, at Banco Popular, it was at this moment that I knew that I wanted to open up my, my own business. As Michelle mentioned, Apex is a private equity firm to help distressed assets in Puerto Rico, particularly I'm looking at the tourism industry as well as the commercial real estate, uh, where there are many opportunities in those sectors. Why the sudden change? To be honest, I don't want to look 20 years into my life and have regrets. I wanted to give myself the opportunity to do something new. And to be honest, it is the best decision for myself, my family, and more importantly, Puerto Rico. There are many local businesses that are having a very tough time. And from this, I will be able to contribute to preserving those companies' future as way, and also finding new opportunities for Puerto Rico. And I hope that my example and my new venture becomes a beacon of opportunity for entrepreneurs, not only from Puerto Rico, but from abroad. So when I think about a forward vision for Puerto Rico's economy, I always think about daring ideas, long-term projects, and more importantly, just good collaboration. As you know, in the past 20 to 25 years, Puerto Rico's uh, economy has needed a, a, a bit of an overhaul. And I really think that we have to focus, more importantly, on a growth economic model and not just solely depend on austerity measures. We need to attract investment capital. We need to attract and, more importantly, maintain young talent. And we need to help the local businesses. In regards to local businesses, there are many laws that have been enacted to attract foreign capital. But at the same time, we need to help the local businesses. We need everybody at an equitable playing field. Everybody knows the problem that Puerto Rico is facing. And I honestly don't want to dwell too much on it. But I do want to offer at least some solutions to the issues. First. I'd like to talk about the depol deep depolitization of the island. Puerto Rico needs a clear strategy that will produce sustainable economic growth, regardless of the politics. As you know, for the past 25 years, we've had many uh, changes in our political spectrum, from one party to the other every four years. And this, to be honest, hampers long-term growth completely. There is, there is absolutely nothing uh, good that comes about this because we get new government agency heads, we get new agendas, and we just, things just do not get done. My generation, the millennials, were not particularly focused on, on political parties. We just want good government. And if we're able to include multi-party efforts into government, I guarantee you that long-term projects will eventually have sustainable, will be sustainable, and we can then drill out a good economic model.
for the future. Second, I know the debt issue is, is, has been mentioned quite a bit. I don't necessarily want to talk too much about the debt. Uh, I, it is an important problem. It is a big issue. But uh, to be honest, what I previously said about the sustainable growth economic model, uh, that I think is the primary issue. I think we need to focus on that. And then we can talk about issues on the debt. Third, the energy front. There's clearly a consensus on the island that this needs to change. It is just, it's, it's unsustainable. It is, more importantly, unreliable. Maybe a private investment with the public company could be a solution. But definitely, we need to look for ways to make it reliable. It is putting Puerto Rico at a disadvantaged position for businesses and individuals. Individuals because they have to carry a high cost to pay for this. The high cost of living in Puerto Rico has gotten pretty bad. At the same time, it's very difficult for businesses to compete when they have such a high cost of energy. Even more so, it's very difficult to attract foreign investment to come to Puerto Rico. But it's just the, the reliability issue that we need to talk about. It's funny that I have here in my notes that I'm going to mention that it's been five months and there's still some folks that don't have power. It's right there. The sad thing is, my phone is going crazy right now because I have family members in Puerto Rico because the power just went out today. And it's apparently going to take one to 16 hours to change or to, to come back. Good time frame. So, so that gives some perspective as to the unreliability issues of the power company. More importantly, I mentioned about in, uh, foreign investment. When I was at the bank, I tried to court the folks from General Motors to come to Puerto Rico, as we have many good export laws that would benefit a manufacturing plant for GM, as well as the real estate, so it would be easy for them to put their shipping ports or be close to a shipping port so they could export their cars. I sent blind emails, and I was shocked that in two weeks I got a reply from their head of global marketing or global manufacturing. And it said that although Puerto Rico did offer many opportunities and they did like the laws, the export laws, for them to put their plant, the high energy cost would still not make a manufacturing plant financially feasible on the island. So that's just an example of why we need to think about other ideas and think about a way to change the current system. And it has to be reliable because it just, everybody in Puerto Rico has to, has to feel the benefits of a good power company. I mean, it's, it's, difficult, it's, it's difficult up here saying that, given what's been happening in Puerto Rico and just power outages and the folks without power, it's just it's a very difficult situation. Fourth, Puerto Rico must improve its public education system. It has to improve the quality more than anything. I don't want to talk too much about this because I know the panel coming afterwards is really going to take a deep dive into this. I just want to mention two things. La Universidad de Puerto Rico is an excellent university. I mean, just an excellent university. Some of the best engineers come out of that school. Hey. Literally, it has one of the best engineering programs. And I know this because we have foreign investment or, or foreign companies come to Puerto Rico and they attract this talent and they take them overseas to work in the research and facility uh, departments. That's how good it is. So uh, if we don't fund this university, our talent is really going to take a hit. So funding to the university is a key important factor in maintaining that level of, of, of skill at the schools. Second, I want to talk about the technical schools. We need to improve our technical schools. It's uh, something that, that Puerto Rico needs. We need to have you know, the technical schools for, for certain jobs. My wife, for example, she runs the Caterpillar distributorship in Puerto Rico. And she's having a very tough time after the hurricane hiring technicians to work on either heavy machinery or work on engines 
or anything related to, to heavy equipment, and, or more importantly in Puerto Rico, power generators. Uh, but we need to improve our technical schools. Fifth, Puerto Rico needs to solve its human capital crisis. It's a twofold problem, because on one side, you have an aging population, and on the other side, you have a very young professional population that's leaving the island. Uh, it hurts to say this, but a lot of friends of mine are, are, you know, have left the island during the years, and, and well, you know, I came back. So it's very hard for me to see them leave. But we need to find a way to create a Puerto Rico that attracts them again. I know that in some uh, economic books, uh, migration is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it can be viewed uh, as a good thing because they tend to come back with ideas, good business ideas, and more importantly, you know, more capital to invest on the island. But lately, it's been at such a rapid rate that it's just been hurtful to the economy. We have, we have less folks paying taxes, and we have less folks buying goods and services on the island. It just, it's, it's hurt. So by creating a better Puerto Rico, we can, we can hope that they come back. And lastly, we need to create the proper conditions for local businesses to grow. I think we need a proper tax structure to be on an equitable playing field with companies from abroad. From abroad. What we would like, obviously, is to have a broad base with smaller ta or lower taxes. What we have, unfortunately, is a very small base with very high taxes. So we need to find a way to, to get a good tax system in, in order to make our companies grow as well as make everybody you know, pay for the proper taxes. At the same time, I'd like to mention that we need to find a way to streamline the arduous permit process in Puerto Rico for opening new businesses. I can tell you that I'm going through this. It's not easy, but I will get it done. So at the end of the day, I know that these are a lot of things that I put forth, and I would love to have a magic wand and you know, get it done. But to be honest, I, I know it's tough. But tough times calls for, for desperate needs. Or, or tough times calls for t tough decisions. And if we can tackle just one of these, just one, we may be able to trigger, tr trigger a good waterfall effect and have all the other solutions fall into place. To be honest, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I really am. And, and my, my vision for Puerto Rico's future is very optimistic, to be honest. Uh, I have two daughters, a five-year-old and a seven-year-old, and I want nothing more than for them to live a bright future in a prosperous Puerto Rico. And I'm in it for the long haul. I started this company, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for the long haul because I believe in Puerto Rico and I believe there's a lot of good things and there's a lot of opportunity. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Richard Martin.